Hello, Ross. Uh, hi, Robert. How are you doing? Not too bad, thank you. Keeping okay? Oh, very good. I don't. I was trying to work out whether you'd actually chatted with me on the literature cart or whether it was somebody else. <coughs> um, well, I've travelled around a little bit. Um, I'm nowhere near, near you at the moment. Um, right. So I don't know who it was, but I've spoken to various people at various carts. Okay. Well, up and down the country? Yes, yes, as I travel around. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yes. I get you. Yes. So perhaps along the way that you you uh, came across uh, the sound from my wife, maybe, and we gave you the contact card, or was it through the... Through, was it through the website that you oh no I, I looked at the charity commission I tried to contact ah. Launston I, I tried to contact Launston Kingdom Hall um, yes. but there's no phone number I, I couldn't I couldn't get her through to them on the phone oh I see so that's where you are you're down Cornwall way Launston yes I, I, if you can yeah, pass my details on that would be that would be absolutely great but I contacted you your owl, owl sister aren't you yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, obviously, yes. yeah, you got it. Yes. Yeah, oh, I understand now, Robert. Yeah, that's great. Um, Thank you. So, so, so you picked up one of our magazines, did you? And I've got a few. Yeah, um, I've got a few, and um, I've looked at a couple of the books, and I've gone to the website quite a lot because people have told me to go to the website. So I've yeah. been doing. I've been doing that, uh, Ross. Yeah. Oh, very good. Uh, what sort of um, don't mind me asking, Robert. What's what sort of background? What's your background? Um, well, I was brought up as a Roman Catholic. I was an altar boy at Buckfast Abbey School in Devon. Okay. From 1971 yep. to 1974, I was mildly involved in the scandal that made the national news. Um, uh, okay. When Abbot Peter and my housemaster, Father Benedict, got 12 to 14 years for what they did, uh, um, yeah. I was mildly involved in that. Um, in the mid-1980s, um, I made a profession of faith in an Assemblies of God church in London. Right. Um, but I came to leave the Evangelical Church. Um, it seems to be just a sort of candy floss religion that's based on feelings and not based on anything concrete other than feelings and feeling good. And, okay, uh, right. It's interesting. Yeah. So that was your experience from it. So you've, yes. you've left, uh, how long have you been, have you left the Evangelical Church, Robert? Um, about nine, ten, ten years. Right, right, I see. Oh, very good. So you, do you say you're sort of searching or what, what, how, do you, how, do you, how are you feeling at the moment about, uh, uh, you know, religion and spirituality? Um, I believe in Christ and I try, yeah. try to follow the teachings of the scriptures as I understand them, um, yeah. but um, I see, uh, I don't see a lot of good in religious institutions. I think they just serve themselves. I think they're set up to, right. to benefit the people yeah. at the top, uh, not the little yes. people at the bottom, such as myself, who are just really cows to be milked. Uh, in the evangelical yeah. church, you're usually out of money for tithing, <laughs> which is a subject oh, I've see. studied in great detail for the last 10 years. Left a bit of a bad taste in the mouth. Yes. Yeah, no, I can understand that. So you presumably you've chatted with Jehovah's Witnesses throughout the years, perhaps as we knocked on your door, and uh, more recently when you've come into contact with the literature carts. Um, mostly the literature carts, really, but people don't really talk to you anymore. They just tell you to go to jw.org, which is what I've been doing. <laughs> Sometimes they will give you references yeah. to look up, so I've, I've done that. And I'm quite happy to do that, Ross, you know, I've no yeah. problem with yeah. that because you learn by being challenged. Um, you have to think and yeah. reflect yeah. on things. So it's a, it's a good thing. I'm, I'm quite happy with that. Yeah, no problem at all. Uh, we, we don't want to make anybody feel uncomfortable or like we're pushing people um, because, uh, as, as you know very well, that uh, I think one of the scriptures in uh, Corinthians that says that God loves a cheerful giver so he wants us to he wants us to to worship him if it comes from the heart we don't want to be coerced into anything or I don't know, made to feel uh, trying to think of the word I'm looking for now but um, <laughs> I 
um, sorry, I'm, I'm actually Robert. I'm actually talking to you in, on my Bluetooth in my car. All right. <laughs> okay. So, um, so and I'm just coming home now. So I'll, I'll, if you if you hear a little uh, a few few noises, just me taking the phone out from the car into the. That's house. all right. That's all right. I wanted to ring you on the right time. So, That's all right. Uh, <laughs> So, um, yeah, I mean, I mean, whatever it is that if you mentioned uh, 1919, I believe, on the, on, the, um, on the answer message, didn't you, uh, Robert? Yes. Um, uh, um, yes, although it was Launceston Kingdom Hall I wanted to get in, in, in contact with, and I, I wasn't able to, so I just went to the Charity yeah. Commission, and I found your one there with a the telephone number, so... That's why I contacted you. Um, the um, 1919 date seems quite pivotal. I've been, yes. I've been given a copy of the Red Revelation, the Grand Climax, it is a handbook. And yes. on page 184, it mentions 1919. Um, yes. I've also been pointed to watched as for 2013 and 2014, which again, both mention 1919. They say that Jesus, yes inspected and then he cleansed the organization in 1919 and i really want a clarification as to what that actually is and was it a complete cleansing or because the the article in the watchtower i forget which year it was 2013 or 2014 it seems to imply that the cleansing started in 1914 but yes. it finished in 1919 at least that's the way i would read it yeah um what i would probably want to do Robert, is before I give you an off the top of my head answer, is that I would probably want to go and look back at those articles again, because I know that we've had a little bit of clarification on that thought within our organisation in, in recent times, but I can't remember the year, whether it was prior to, did you say 2013-14, those Watchtower references? Well, the Revelation, the Red Revelation book, is from the 1980s. And, yeah, it is. That's and, and they, that is sort of, yeah. Sorry, sorry, let, let me listen to you. No, no, I was just going to say that there, there's been a few of those points that have been updated um, in recent times, but by and large, you know, a lot of the, lot of the Revelation book is still very current. But um, I seem to think, seem to remember off the top of my head, there's been a little bit of an adjustment in our understanding of the passage where it talks about the cleansing. It's related to the cleansing of the spiritual temple, isn't it? I think the articles point to, but, um, but basically what I do know is that in answer to your original question about the cleansing, 1919 has been of quite a key year uh, in regards to our organization because there's been a lot of refinements, you know, whether they be mm -hmm. in an organization or organizational refinements we've had you know adjustment in our understanding of the scriptures which has meant we've had to you know um, have a changed view on some of the some of the things that we are involved with you know um, some of our uh, you know teachings and doctrines have, have adjusted slightly um, so I suppose it's a constant refinement really because we don't believe that our organization it's full of imperfect people um, and as a result you know even though we've got what we call a governing body who are responsible for, for feeding us spiritual food that's based on the scriptures they're not prophets so they're um, you know they're infallible but they are trying their best to work along with the Holy Spirit so at times you know they they um, they recognise the need to to adjust when perhaps a, a scriptural a doctrine or passage needs to be needs to be refined or you know understood better if you're more clear if you know what I mean. Yes. So um, um, yeah, but was it was it anything specific to 1919 or just that, that idea of when the organisation was cleansed? Um, well, I'm not a Jehovah's Witness. I. I, you know, that I've never been involved and I wouldn't yeah. actually accept that. And I, I found at the carts, people weren't really able to answer this. As far as I understand, the Red Revelation book says that the cleansing work started in 1918. 
after the 1,260 days. Now, I'm not sure if those 1,260 days, which is 42 months in the lunar cycle, that they apply it to the solar cycle. I'm not sure if that starts in October 1914 or December 1914, but it's applied 42 months. That gets you to June 1918, when the Watchtower, eight Watchtower officers were imprisoned. That's right. Um, and then the Watchtower talks about three and a half days, and the three and a half days is taken spiritually, not f literally like the 42 yes. months. Three and a half days is spiritually taken to mean nine months. So that gets you from their prison sentence to when they were released in March 1919. And the day after that is the claim that um, Jesus chose the Watchtower Society, as far as I understand. Yes. Um, well... And then you have another 1,260 days after that. That's on page 172 of the Red Revelation book. And that takes you from March 1919, um, 42 months. Again, they're lunar months, but it's applied to the solar calendar. That takes you to the Cedars Point Convention in 1922. And it's said that Cedar Point Convention in Ohio was the first of the seven trumpets of the book of Revelation. I did find that a bit hard to accept. No, absolutely. I mean, I mean, uh, the the interesting thing here is you're quoting um, from from one of our publications. So, well, well, well done. You are. Uh, you sound very studious. Yes. Yes. And um, you know that's really to be commended. I must admit, I've not really studied in depth the Revelation book for quite a few years. Uh, we did we did study it through our congregation Bible studies. We've done that a few times, but. I'm, you're probably more up to date with this information than I am at the moment. <laughs> um, well, as far as I know, um, I think it was the 2013 Watchtower. Um, yeah. I can't remember the reference, but I think it's on page 14. It's footnote six, but I can't remember the actual reference to the Watchtower itself. Goodness, it says that yeah, in yeah. 19, in, sorry, in 2013, there was a change. The cleansing wow. no longer started in 1918, as in the Red Revelation book. It now starts in that's 1914 and goes on to 1919. So that's the adjustment that I was thinking, that I couldn't remember specifically what um, what it was referenced to, really. I, I, I think the thing is, Robert, yes. as you can probably imagine, we, um, our ministry work these days... Um, you're you're breaking up a bit, up hard to hear you. Oh, sorry, can you hear that's me better. Now? Yes, better now, yes. Yeah. Uh, our ministry that we engage in publicly tends to be, um, if you like, more milk of the word. You know, we're, we're sort of trying to attract interest. And it's very difficult these days because, as you probably appreciate, there's a lot of apathy towards spiritual things in the world today. So we don't often get the opportunity to chat to somebody that's really on the money with, with quite deep matters. So... Um, I'm, I'm a little bit, uh, you've caught me on the hop a little bit. That's all right. <laughs> that, that's all right. Um, um, no, I'm, I'm, I'm grateful, Ross, for, for your help. Um, I mean, the thing I've studied the most will be the Trinity. Um, I, I, in the 1980s, I, I was converted in the Assemblies of God Church, but I fell away. When I came back, it was in the Oneness Movement or the Apostolic Movement, known as Jesus Only. It's got yeah. various names. Have you heard of it? Okay. I haven't, no. Um, in parts of the world, Asia and South America, uh, about a quarter of all classical Pentecostals are oneness. They're Pentecostals who reject the Trinity. Right. So I was involved okay. in that. So I've studied that for 30 years. And the other thing I'm particularly interested in would be um, tithing. I've studied that for 10 years. Um, believe it or not, absolutely no church is interested in the slightest whatsoever in the trinity or how the trinity relates to salvation or the gospel at all no i can't i you know i went to university in the 1990s so since i left university in 1997 i can't think of one instance of any enthusiasm at all um, well we, I, I i can i can understand that because you know in our ministry Maybe you go back to the 80s and the Trinity doctrine used to come up quite a lot in conversation. But we find now we don't even, nobody talks about it. 
very rarely, very rarely do people bring it up. If they believe in it, they'll they'll bring it up. But yeah. uh, we, we hardly ever have to tackle the um, subject of the Trinity. Well, you know. I found I came across it all the time. Um, when I visited churches, I said I never really settled after... 1991 I was told in a Baptist church in Snostall that by my home group leaders that the Trinity was pagan the Son was created and the Baptist didn't baptize correctly and they were leaders in the Baptist church um, but um, as I have spoken to church people I find there is absolutely no understanding whatsoever of the Trinity and um, they just make it up as they go along so they, they will all say we believe in the Trinity because yeah, they're they fearful that if they say, I reject the Trinity, they'll be called a cult. So they all affirm it. But then when you ask yeah. them to define it, they just make it up as they go along. And um, yeah. it's, it's shocking beyond belief, the um, total apostasy of the evangelical church is unbelievable. And nobody is correctable. Nobody's teachable. Um, you have little popes in charge of little fellowships. And they just want to get rid of anyone who can challenge them. They want to be the alpha male and they want women and beta males to surround them who can never challenge them. And um, so that's that's where I put a lot of my uh, effort and, and study in the Trinity and in the last 10 years tithing. Tithing is um, a huge thing. Um, if I was a Jehovah's Witness and I was beside the carts, that's the one thing I would gem up on. And I don't mean by reading Watchtower articles, because with re respect, you're never going to learn much about tithing from the Watchtower. I'd actually go to the original source, um, the pro-tithing preachers, and the people who preach against tithing. There's wonderful stuff on YouTube on, on, both, on both sides. And when you look at both sides, the best of, of, of both... Um, I mean, Dr. Russell Kelly probably has written the best book against tithing, um, but tithing is taking over the evangelical church. It is absolutely, um, it's absolutely huge. And um, if if I was a Jehovah's Witness and an evangelical Christian came up to me, I would say, okay, I'll happily discuss tithing. Um, I'll happily discuss the Bible with you if we discuss tithing first. And you'd be shocked that if you did the effort, if you spent six months of your life really seriously looking at this, and you have to look on both sides. You can't just read one side of the issue. In six months' time, you'd be able to eat up for breakfast the average evangelical pastor because they just haven't studied this. No, that's fair enough. I mean, I, I think, to be honest, I can understand that. I mean, we find, to be honest, that even a subject which you would think would be, well, I won't say the word simple, but even a subject like God's kingdom, what God's kingdom is, we find that, that that's a subject that many struggle to answer. Those that believe in it, even even church leaders, struggle with that particular that particular subject. So um, something like tithing, yeah, I can totally understand. So is it something, Robert, that, that uh, that's a subject that really interests you? Then obviously, I, I've studied it for on? ten years, but it's not something yeah. that would interest you as a Jehovah's Witness. But if I was a Jehovah's Witness beside the cart that's what the people who approach you and argue with you, many of them would believe that Christians have to pay a tithe. New Covenant Christians yeah. in the New Covenant are subject to the tithe laws. Um, uh, you know, it's, 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 it's so easy to disprove it. Um, so I'm, that's well, I mean, just, I don't know your stand on it, but obviously you probably know from talking with Jehovah's Witnesses that... I, I would be vehemently against it. I would be vehemently well, against tithing. Yeah, we're not... We're, all we feel is that the uh, the law covenant, you know, obviously was nailed to the stake. And so although we're not under the law covenant anymore, including tithing, we do obviously... We do obviously respect and glean a lot from the principles that the law covenant was based upon so um you know as you probably know from our organization we give voluntarily you can be a judge i'm not talking about giving no i'm not talking about giving i'm talking about tithing not giving not giving no. yeah tithing is not giving 
tithing was a mandatory law under the old covenant yeah, where yeah. Israel had to pay three tithes. If you own land in the nation of Israel, you had to pay three tithes from that land. It wasn't something you chose to do. You weren't giving. It was the law. No, it, was it was a tax. Favorite. You were commanded to do that. Yes. But yeah, then no, evangelicals today take those verses and they apply it to new covenant Christians. All I'm saying is, look, if if I was a Jehovah's Witness, you'd be like Superman at the cast. You'd be un, you'd be un, undefeatable. All you have yeah. to say is, I'll yeah. discuss any topic with you you like, provided. Let me ask you about your church. Do you practice tithing? And when they say yes, fine, I'll discuss yeah. anything, provided we discuss that first. I mean, I, I, I mean, I left the evangelical church, not just because of the sexual scandals in the church, but partly due to the Trinity, which sounds incredible. Yes. Why would I leave Trinitarian okay. churches because of the Trinity, when I am a Trinitarian? You are a Trinitarian. Yeah, of course. Okay. Yeah, but I left the evangelical church and one of the reasons was over the doctrine of the trinity which they affirm and which i affirm mm. do you know why i left i'd be interested to know because many people have no theological training in these churches they make stuff up and often they will describe the Trinity off the cuff, just make it up as they go along. Like they'll say, well, there's three separate gods or there's three separate persons. When the creeds don't teach that, they teach they are not separate, they are distinct. Distinct means you can distinguish between them. And even the Athanasian Creed in the fourth point says not dividing the substance. So the substance of God is not divided, not split up into three separate gods. Other people that I've come across will say that Jesus is God the Father. I've heard that all the time, over and over and over again. I remember speaking to an Anglican um, uh, vicar who I, I, I knew. Um, I remember speaking on and off to, uh, to him about this and sexual scandals in the church for a year and a half. How constantly I'd be told that Jesus is God the Father, which he knew. He was a graduate from Birmingham. I was, I'm a graduate from Aberdeen. Um, we, we talked about this for a year and a half, but he didn't do anything about no. it. No. They never do. When there's a scandal in the church, all the church pastors and ministers cover it all up. It's all covered up. But you now have a situation, again, if, if I was a Jehovah's Witness beside you in the card, uh, the other thing I'd want to discuss is the Trinity. <laughs> but I'd say, uh, you'd say, which church do you go to? You go to this Pentecostal church or this Baptist church or this yeah. charismatic church, you download the creed of the church from the site or you'd ask the person, yes, I'll talk to you, but I'd like to have your church creed from the site, please. Um, then you talk to them about the Trinity, but you'd be saying all the time, excuse me, you're contradicting your own church creed. <laughs> yeah. It says here that Jesus yeah, is the uh... son in your church creed. And also in the creeds of the church, the Athanasian Creed, the Westminster Confession of Faith, the Baptist Confession of 1689. None of them teach Jesus is God the Father. That's modalism. So why are you teaching that Jesus is God the Father? Or why are you teaching that God has three spirits or there's three thrones in heaven or God is three separate persons? Or um, another one would be Apollinarianism. They would teach that Christ is just a uh, human flesh but he has no human, human spirit. So um, that's just friendly advice for you. Um, you don't need yeah. to disagree with someone. You can say, well, I'm actually ambivalent about it. But if the Trinity is so important, obviously you know all about it. You can explain it to me. And when they start explaining it, you point out, oh, you're disagreeing with your own church's doctrinal statement of faith. Why, yeah. is, why is that? Why are you telling me yeah. That there's three separate gods or three separate spirits or three separate persons when your church statement of faith says they're not separate they are one god but they are distinct not separate yeah. and, and you'll find out that um well i got i got i got sick of it hearing this sort of nonsense year after year in the end i just left i didn't want to put up with it anymore Fair enough. Yeah. You know, um, you're obviously aware that, as 
Jehovah's Witnesses, we don't we don't believe in the Trinity. Yes. Yes. Um, yes. But what we tend to do, Robert, as you probably recognise in our ministry now, is we we try not to engage in arguments with people. We try to find common ground where we can. If people want to ask us questions, genuinely want to ask us questions and want to find out the truth from the scriptures, then, you know, gladly we'll, we'll try our best to direct them. But um, we, 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 tend, we tend to try and focus on the, the, the message of truth from the scriptures as best we can. Right. Um, that, that's really our aim in talking with people, not so much focusing on our differences, I suppose, but what we've know the common ground we can find I suppose a bit like the Apostle Paul tried to do didn't he, he tried to be become all things to to all, all different types of people I think he said or words to that effect all things to people of all sorts I think the Apostle Paul said didn't yes. he um, so you know the, the I mean was... to say that we watered... yes. sorry sorry no I interrupted you sorry sorry Ross no I just say that didn't mean to say of course we water down the truth of course we don't but it's just far better to, 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 for a reasoning approach to try and find a common ground and build on that with people. And, um, and then, you know, if people want to know, sincerely want to know the answers to questions and we can direct them to the scriptures, then they can make an informed choice as to what they do with that information. But um, we try and, you know, just take that sort of approach with people really as best yes. we can. Yes, yes, yes. Um, but um, as regards your 1919 point, I... I would have to go back and scrub up on my knowledge of that. Oh, yes, yeah. fine. That's absolutely uh, because fine. I don't want to say things off the top of my head yeah. which, um, which are not right. But, yeah, um, yeah that's, 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 that's absolutely fine. I mean, put, yeah. send my details on to Launceston. That, that, will, that will be great. And if you want to get back to me, um, all I ask is just text me in advance. Don't just sort of phone. I, I do need a little bit of notice. Yeah. I can never speak on a Monday. Yeah. I can never speak on a Monday at all. No, you said that, yeah. Um, Can I ask you, Robert, if you don't mind, if you mind me asking you this question? Yep. Yeah. What What is your What is your um, What's your sort of goal, or what is your aim in this? Are you Are you Do you feel like you're searching for the the right religion, or do you feel that you just, or are you, you know, that's that's the kind of question that I'm interested in, really. I suppose what your what your aim is. Um, if, you, if that doesn't sound too hard. <laughs> no, not at all. Um, I, I want to serve and follow Christ. Um, you asked about the kingdom of God. I, I believe the kingdom of God is central to what I'm doing. The kingdom of God is the rule of God. I don't believe the kingdom of God has anything to do with dates or um, 1914 or anything like that. It's the rule of God over his people. Christ is ruling yes. at the present time since his resurrection yeah. in the midst of his enemies. So um, Colossians 1.13, um, gosh, I'm, I'm a bit tired. I've been in the library uh, for quite a lot of the day. Um, let me just think a minute. Um, he hath delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of the son of his dear love. So it uses aorist, past tense, completed action to say that we have been, Paul is writing in the mid 50s, about 20 years, 25 years after the crucifixion and resurrection. He's writing using completed action or a simple past tense in English to say we yeah. have been translated into the kingdom of the Son. So the, 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 the Christ became king at his resurrection. That's the Messianic Psalm, Psalm 2. Um, yeah. He's given all power and all, all authority perhaps would be a better phrase Matthew 28 18 I know the King James says all power but he's given all authority because he never really lost his power at all during his incarnation he he possessed it but he just chose not to to use his divine powers um, and Christ is king but he rules as Psalm 110 verse 2 says in the midst of his enemies so as as Christians our aim is to see the kingdom of God furthered satan retreat satan withdrawn and the kingdom of god which means the rule of christ over people's lives advanced yeah. unfortunately um 
what I've seen is that um, the place that needs the kingdom of God most of all are the evangelical churches. I honestly think the Catholic Church is more biblical in many aspects than the evangelicals. Um, right. And that's saying right. something, because the Catholic Church is pretty, pretty damn satanic. <laughs> the mass is a blasphemy. But, um, yeah, well, you certainly you, you know, you, you've obviously had experience of that, haven't you, Robert? So, yeah. You know, I but I think there's more I mean, chance of actually committing suicide for someone like me who's zealous, because they're the ones who they tend to target in an evangelical church. Um, there's terrible abuse, um, terrible abuse. Um, but um, yeah, so I, I would see the kingdom of God as the rule of God. Um, for instance, let me give you an example. Um, uh, about two, three weeks ago, I spoke to two Mormon missionaries here um, because it's educational you don't you have to think about what you believe theology isn't just the bible and doctrine once you work out your doctrines you'll never get everything absolutely right i'm not right about everything but you think about it and you allow yourself to be challenged yeah. and that reflection means you sometimes are told things by people, hey, I didn't know that. Yeah, I could be wrong about this. I could be wrong about that. So you make adjustments, you change. And the third part of theology is application. You try and apply it to your life, but you have to think about it. And that's why it's so important to talk to people. I, I found when I just went to the churches and sat in the pews, no one really talked to me at all. I was lonely. I really yeah. was. I was lonely. And you're not really doing Christianity if you don't actually talk about it. So, well, I mean, you, you, you know well as, as well I, as I do, Jesus said in John 13, 35, that uh, the mark of a disciple is love. As the mark of a true disciple is love, if you have love amongst yourselves. Right, right. And, um, you know, so that really is, that sums up Christianity, doesn't it? Love, really. Well, yes, but I'm, yeah. yes. Um, but I'm also talking about when we examine the Bible and we examine, because you see, if you deal with the Bible on a sort of happy clappy basis, you have very shallow roots. Whereas if you deal with theology and doctrines, those roots go very, very deep. Yeah. And they go deeper when you, just... when you think about things and you reflect on things. Yeah. And they go deeper still when you then apply it, because there's, there's, there's that three parts to theology. Learning it, thinking about it, and allowing yourself to be challenged, and then applying it to your life. And now, I, 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 I spoke to two Mormons um, the, other, the other week, and um, I haven't seen them since. You know, they've just kind of yes. disappeared, because I guess they found it a little bit difficult. Um, what I did with the Mormons was I quoted to them the Gospel Topic Essays. Are you familiar with the Gospel Topic Essays? Right. Sorry about my ignition's just... Uh, that, that, sorry, that, that, sorry, that's Robert. okay. Um, on the Mormon website, it used to be LDS.org, but they changed it yeah. for legal reasons to another site. Okay. With the authority of the First Presidency, now, that's the president of their church. I don't know if it's still Monson, President Monson, and his other two co-leaders. So the, so the three top people in the Mormon church, including their president, the guy right at the top, the equivalent of Pope Francis in the Mormon church, yeah. and his two top cardinals. Uh, they're actually yeah. called apostles. but Okay, they've put the Gospel Topic essays up on the Mormon, the official Mormon website. And I'm... Right. I pointed the Mormon missionaries to their own literature on their own website, and they didn't want anything more to do with me. Right. Um, for instance, one of the essays would be The Mother in Heaven, um, where with the authority of president, the president of the Mormon church, the essay says that we don't just have a father in heaven, there's a heavenly mother in heaven. And if you go to the other Mormon literature, it talks about God having polygamous sex with goddess wives on a star, on a planet near the star Kolob. Right. Right. Now you think, why would they put this up on their website? They're putting it up for yeah. legal reasons. 
because the Mormon church has been taken to court and it's losing, it's going to lose billions, it's going to go bankrupt. Is that right? Yeah, the reason for that is people are taking them to court and saying, well, I was told by the missionaries all these wonderful stories 40 years ago. I've dedicated my life to the Mormon church. I've tithed, I've given $100,000 or $200,000 to the Mormon church over the last 40 years. I spent thousands of hours working unpaid for the Mormon church. And I found out that actually what I was told was a complete pack of lies. Yeah. So what the Mormons are doing now is with the authority of the First Presidency, they're putting up on a fairly obscure website, and some of the essays are hard to find, deliberately so, the incriminating stuff about the Mormon church. Right. So years ago, this would be uh, work by evil ex-Mormons who are satanically inspired and telling lies about the Mormon church. Now, the very same things are up on the Mormon website with the authority of the Mormon president for anyone to read. But the Mormons know that 99.9% .9 of all Mormons are going to be too damn lazy to read it. I mean, another essay would be the translation of the Book of Mormon. Okay, now the Mormons will give yeah. you a Book of Mormon, Blue Book of Mormon. It's got pictures of Joseph Smith bending over some golden plates and doing a work of translation as he looks at these golden plates. In the Gospel Topic essays, you find out that he didn't translate from the golden plates at all. I mean, between you and me, there never were any golden plates. It's, it's, it's all a complete yeah. lie. Okay. What he did yeah. in the Gospel Topic essay, he put a top hat upside down and he put a stone in the hat called a peep stone, which is a form of necromancy. And he covered the, the brim of the hat with his face. And then um, he would use um, sorcery so that letters or figures would appear on the stone. And that was how he translated the Book of Mormon. Now, if you've dedicated 40 years of your life to yeah. Mormonism, you spent $100,000 on Mormonism, you can sue them and say, I was told lies by those Mormon missionaries and the Mormon president for the last 40 years. I want my $100,000 back plus millions yeah. in compensation. And so that's why the gospel topic essays are going up. I see. But, but the Mormons... How do you feel, Robert, about so the Jehovah's Witness uh, organisation? How so, do you feel about us? Um, well, I, I do believe that they did claim to be a prophet. As you said earlier, they no. didn't claim to be a prophet. No. We don't, we, we've never ever claimed to be inspired prophets. Never. We recognise that the scriptures are inspired. Right. But um, humans are not. But, I mean, say humans are not. We don't believe that any of our our governing body are inspired prophets. We obviously recognise that the Bible writers were inspired. There's a Watchtower article from 1972, 1st of April. Yes. I've gone to the Kingdom Hall. I went yeah. to the Kingdom Hall once to look. Of course, it's now on the website. It's, yeah. it's page one, 197 of the brown reprints for wow. 1972. That's before I was born. Okay. Well, it's Watchtower, 1st of April, 1972, page 197. Yeah. They shall know that a prophet was amongst them. And I'll read a little bit. It says that the Jehovah's Witnesses are a prophet. Right. Well, that was 1972, did you say? Yes. Could I just read it? Yeah. Yeah. Read he, my publication. That's yeah. it. He had a prophet to warn them. This prophet was not one man, but was a body of men and women. It was the small group of footstep followers of Jesus Christ, known at that time as international Bible students. Today, they are known as Jehovah's Christ's Christian Witnesses. Yeah. So it I says that a prophet was that, amongst them, and that's... Yeah. No, I don't doubt that, because yeah. I, I suppose, you, I mean, you, the word prophet, I suppose if you look at the actual meaning of the word, um, it's got more to do with a proclamation, hasn't it, I suppose? Off the top of my head, the mm -hmm. understanding of the word of prophet. But what I'm trying to say is that we don't view ourselves as inspired prophets. But we are not inspired. So in other words, you know, that's why we've made 
we've made mistakes. So the way we've understood scriptures, we have made certain mistakes. Yes, yes. And we've admitted those mistakes because we are, we are, you know, we are not infallible. The organisations never claim to be infallible. Yes. Um, I think on the major things, you know, our, our understanding of the scriptures has not changed for oh, well over a hundred years. But you know, there has been adjustments. Um, I mean, you know as well as I do that the scriptures tell us in the Psalms that the light will get brighter. Um, the path of the righteous, that light will get brighter until we... Well, until I think the it's the path, I think it's Proverbs, Proverbs 4.18, I think it's the path Proverbs, of the righteous yeah. um, which gets, gets brighter. Um, That's it, you've got it. As, as, as people follow um, the will of Yahweh God, by obeying the scripture, their path is... Easier, it's clearer to see. It, yeah, it's it's okay. illuminated yeah. by, 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 by light. It's the path that's illuminated, not actually light itself. Yeah. And then the next verse, Proverbs four nineteen, talks about the wicked who don't follow Yahweh God, or, or if you yeah. prefer the word Jehovah, yeah. um, they stumble in darkness because they're following men. They're, they're not following yeah. Yahweh, Yahweh, Yah, Yahweh God. But but I mean, exactly. but I mean, if if the Watchtower society is not inspired, then why do I need to listen to it? Well, because obviously, from, from your studies of the scriptures, and I, and I can tell you are a real student. I mean, you, you know, you, you've seen already the things that I've said. I've made a few mistakes already. <laughs> um, but what we do feel, we do feel that God is using a channel, a human channel, which Obviously, we refer the scripture of Jesus referred to as a faithful and discreet sled to provide spiritual food at the proper time. Mm -hmm. But Jehovah is using a channel, and those, that channel are faithful, faithful Christians in our organisation mm -hmm. that, that come under the name of the governing body, which you probably know very well. But they are imperfect people. They're imperfect people. So although they, you know, they, they they're very much. Uh, individuals that are full of Holy Spirit, if you like. Um, they've never claimed to be perfect individuals. Um, and so therefore, although, you know, we put a lot of trust in um, the spiritual food that they dispense, you know, we, we do recognize, not that we don't trust what they do, because we recognize mm -hmm. that they are the channel. They are the channel that God is using to help us to understand the scriptures better, to draw closer to, to Jehovah. And I suppose just to, you know, just to give us that, that, that guidance that we need to apply the scriptures in the times that we're living in, because uh, as, as you well know, you know, it's, um, this system is certainly uh, on a downward spiral, and life is just very difficult to, to handle, isn't it? Mm. So, but we do recognise that to be the channel. The faithful yeah. and discreet slave, as represented by the governing body of Jehovah's Witnesses. And yeah. As you, as you know, you, you, you've got knowledge of our organisation. They are the ones that have the heavenly hope of, of, of when they've completed their faithful course on the earth. They've got the hope of ruling alongside Jesus in that heavenly kingdom. Uh, I'm not I'm not one of those. I am not somebody who's got a heavenly hope. I, my hope is to live on on this earth in a paradise forever. That's my hope. So really, we, we respect them. Um, and the great thing from my point of view is that they're very candid and honest about about um, their place in the organisation. They're humble people. They don't blow their own trumpet. They don't claim to be perfect. But together, they work as a, as a body and they work along with God's spirit. And... Uh, we get very well looked after spiritually, and the, the spiritual food that we receive from them and their helpers, um, as you very well know, we're, we're quite a we're quite a powerhouse when it comes to literature production. Yes, um, yes. And we really are focusing, particularly now, we're focused on translation. That's one of the main areas that our organisation is focused on, so that people can understand the Bible in their mother tongue, and that's really. That's really been ramped up, that emphasis on that in recent years. So, yes. I mean, have you ever studied with Jehovah's Witnesses, Robert, or is it just something that's interested you? 
Um, I speak to a whole range of different groups, Ross. Yeah. I do have to go in a moment, and thank you very much for your help. I yeah, did, no I did go through the book, What Does the Bible Really Teach? We got as far as chapter yeah. four. Um, I think yeah. we did chapter four in over two or three weeks, and the person didn't really like my position on the Trinity, and so it finished there. But look, you've thank got you. my telephone number if you want to phone again. It's been lovely speaking to you. Thank you very you, much for your help. Would you like me to text you the Launceston um, details, or are you satisfied with... I'm happy what for you. I, I, I looked at the details on the Charity Commission, and I couldn't get through. Yeah. But if you have a telephone number, um, you can either phone them on my behalf, or um, you can text me the number. I guess it's easy. Oh. Yeah. And was it specifically the, the point we talked about earlier, about when the temple was cleansed? Um, Robert, was that really the, the interest for you? Or yes, was, yes. It's it's yeah. similar to the Seventh-day Adventist belief. They believe that in 1844, and I won't go into all the theology, but they believe in 80, 1844 Jesus did an investigative judgment. It's similar to that. And that's one yes. reason why I'm particularly interested in that. Right, right, OK. OK, well, okay. thank you. That's no problem, Robert. I'll, um, I'll look into that for you. Thank you. Um, and we can chat another time, or I can put you on to the brothers locally to, yes. to chat with you. But I presume you know where the cart is in Launceston? Um, well, I don't actually live in Launceston. I live outside of Launceston. So I have, right. I've right. heard there's a, a hall there, but I don't know where it is. No, I don't know at all myself. But um, I suppose with Jehovah's Witnesses, we're quite visible, and there's every chance somebody might knock on your door tomorrow, isn't there? Oh, right. Really? But um, I, I actually, after chatting with you, I'm going to, I'm going to brush up on that, on that particular subject myself, because yes. I was discussing it with my wife earlier, and uh, you know, I said 1919 was mentioned in the message, and I said, you know what, we've had a clarification in that understanding, and I can't quite remember what it is. Yeah. So. Um, I'm going to brush up on it myself as well. But I think, to be honest, from what from from talking with you, I mean, you've quoted our article, so yeah, I I don't think we're going to be able to put you point you towards anything more recent that would elaborate on what you already what you've already read. Okay. Um, because if that's the clarification, 2013-14, it does make sense. To me. I, I cannot remember the actual quotes. I remember they were both the fifteenth day of the month, the 15th of uh, July and I think the 15th of November, but I can't remember which is 2013 and which is 2014. Yeah, no worries. No worries. Um, on the top of my head, I can't remember. I can't even remember the year, so there you yeah. go. <laughs> well, look, thank you. Th thank you very much, Ross. It's been lovely speaking to you and do feel yeah, free to you, phone Robert. again if you ever and, want uh, to. I'll... Yeah, absolutely. And um, if, I, if I do find a number for the Launceston Hall, you tried ringing it, you say? No, I, I can't. I can't get the phone number. You can't get the phone number? No, well, there isn't a phone I'll number. Try and find, I'll try and find out the number of the nearest Kingdom Hall to you. Launceston. And you, you, you contact them on my behalf. That would be great. And what would, you want, what would you want me to say to them, Robert? Just give them my telephone number. They get in contact. because I, okay? I, I can't get their telephone number. I've been on the internet. Yeah. Uh, it gives the... Um, uh, address of the Kingdom Hall, but no telephone number. I went to the Charity yeah. Commission. There was an email address, so I've emailed yeah. them. I think I've done it twice, but I haven't had a response. Okay. I will find out. Um, I live in Evesham. That's where I live. Um, you may have never heard of it, but it's a little market town near Holster and Stratford. Mm -hmm. But I, I knew somebody from Launceston Congregation many years ago. Mm. Um, so I know there is a congregation there for sure. It's still current. Thank you. Well, to the best of my knowledge. So I'll, I'll do my best, and I will, and I will pass on a, a number to them. And it is still specifically to do with 1919. Yes, 1919, and perhaps less so the New Covenant, because I would believe I am in the New Covenant. Okay, so you you believe that you're one of those anointed ones that that we spoke of a few moments ago, because. That's, the, that's probably the, you know, when I was talking to you about the governing body, our governing body, the faith yes. of the streets lane, we obviously believe that they're in the new covenant. Yes. 
Okay. And they've got the heavenly hope. That's, that's, that's our understanding of the scriptures. Now, I'm not part of that. It doesn't make me second rate, according to <laughs> the scriptures. Okay. It just means that I've got a different, a different hope, a different future hope. So, um, Jesus okay, spoke well, of two flocks, didn't he? Um, two flocks. We'll, we'll leave that for, for another time. I, yeah, I believe that's just that's a reference to the time. Gentiles. That's John yeah. John ten sixteen. I think that's John just a reference. 10, 16. Yeah, I think that's just a reference to the Gentiles coming into the church and being added to the Jewish believers in Acts chapter ten. But I, um, I think we've talked for long enough. I think three quarters of an hour yeah, is, is quite enough. Good talking with you, Robert. All right, lovely Welcome speaking to you, Rob. Thank you. Bye. Okay. Thank you. Bye.